Hi guys and welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamel. Today we're going to be going over the 3D viewer, which has been improving in the KiCad 5.0, which is what we're going over today. It actually appeared in KiCad 4.0 with the OpenGL uh, re rendering engine, and now in KiCad 5.0 there's more options, and there's lots of other things that we'll talk about in the future as well, like step imports and I just and step exports, and basically things that allow you to not only bring in components, but then and view them, you know, view them in the, this 3D viewer we'll look at, but then you can also export the entire thing, send it to a CAD model, and you might want to, you know, render it in a different engine. You might want to pull it into a CAD, uh, a mechanical CAD program to see if everything fits. So let's take a look at a board that we've been looking at here. Now this is a board that uh, we worked on in early earlier parts of Contextual Electronics. Really simple two-layer board. This is one that we actually made into a four-layer board. So I will highlight those and turn those layers on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into View, and then 3D Viewer. We can also hit Alt Three. And we have that here. Now, what I will point out is because this is coming from an older version of KiCad, this board was made in KiCad 3, I believe, uh, it actually did not pull in the footprint. So what I did is I actually dropped in a, a uh, footprint here that represented you know, just a new SOIC that's very similar to the one here. I didn't actually go and swap those out, though. So what we can do is that we can click with our left mouse button and drag around. We see that 3D component with the 3D bounding box as well, which is nice. Uh, if we want to go to the backside, we just click, click and drag across. That allows us to look at the backside here. If we want to go and reset everything, we can hit Z. And Z allows us to have like that centerized view. Can Shift Z is the backside. Then same thing for X. That's the X axis. Shift X is the other side. Y. And then Shift Y. And really, the only reason you would use this uh, is if you wanted to kind of see that 3D view here. Uh, and really, you know, since we only have so many components, well, we only have one component in this case, uh, it's not as useful as it would be if we had populated the entire board. Now, if you go and populate a new board with the default KiCad libraries, then you're going to be in good shape here. You see I'm also panning around here. I'm actually doing that with the middle, middle mouse button or the, mouse, the, the roller wheel uh, that has a third click in there, and that click allows you to pan around. I am a huge proponent of using a mouse, a three-button mouse or a two-button mouse with a roller wheel. Uh, I think that's a really important thing for KiCad. The scrolling uh, wheel also allows you to zoom in and out, and I think these things just make things really natural. Right-click is just a context menu there. All right, so let's go and change some options here. You can see this actually is a darker solder mask than you would normally see. This is a black solder mask. I'd set this to kind of match the, the last board that I had sent out to the fab. But let's go into the settings here. There's also available up here preferences, display options. And here we can basically turn up, if we turn on realistic mode, it's going to start to look like the actual layout colors that we have. You remember here, these are the layout colors we have, uh, and then the back side. So basically, that's what what I was used to before. I like the realistic mode personally. I think it's better. Uh, show the board body. Basically, we can turn that on and off. We turn the realistic mode off, uh, but now we can actually see inside the board. That's kind of cool too to see see the layers, right? So this is a great way to visualize. Let's do Y. So you kind of visualize the vias here, and that's nice, especially if you're getting started in electronics to kind of visualize what what a four layer board looks like in the first place. So I kind of like that. Uh, let's go back to Z. We'll turn, oops, we'll turn the board body back on. Copper thickness, bounding boxes, and filled areas and zones. So copper thickness, it's actually pretty hard to see, but if you zoom way in, you can kind of see this has basically been flattened now. Let's take a look at that first, first pad here. You see this pad? If we turn copper thickness back on, we should see it pop up a little bit. Yeah, not much. Really, it's just, you know, it's, it, it it's just for photorealism kind of thing, especially if you're looking at uh, you know looking at it in a CAD program. It'll export that as well. Bounding boxes. That's the green box here. And uh, what else we got here? Uh, show filled areas and zones. So that's just you know the copper fills. Uh, we don't actually have through hole models turned on right now, but that doesn't matter because we don't have any 3D models or, or through hole models. Uh, silk screen, solder mask, solder paste, and adhesive layers. So I'm going to turn those all off right now. What you'll see is this is basically a board that looks like if you were just etching it. So this is just the copper front and back side, right? So uh, it's kind of interesting, especially if you are going to use like a board milling machine. Uh, this is a, probably a good way to, to view it. Um, I personally like to also keep, when I'm doing this, I like to keep everything turned on, including the solder paste layers. The adhesive layer doesn't really matter that much because I'm not using it over. But the, uh, the, the solder paste layer, because you see right here, C501 has gray, and then this PD5 has nothing. It's gold, right? That's because that's actually an exposed area. Uh, that will not get solder paste. That will not be open in the, 
solder paste stencil that I get, uh, that I order. So basically anything that's gray right now, there will be an opening in the solder paste stencil when I swipe solder paste across it, that will be a, uh, you know, something that solder paste deposits in through that, through that hole there. All right, so let's look at some other options here. Uh, I'm going to zoom a bit out. It's going to take a second, but um, oops, Z to reset. I'm going to click and drag here. What I'm going to do is turn on ray tracing. Now, this is a, a more photorealistic mode here. I don't use this very often. Basically, the only reason you would use this is if you want to kind of export a really nice 3D render. Say you're sending a photo to your boss, or you know, especially if you're not using another CAD program. Normally, what I would do is if I was using this, I would actually export the entire board, probably put it into a 3D modeling program, and then mod you know, render it with the, the enclosure as well. You know, this this is basically a similar thing to what it would do there uh, in in a 3D modeling program, but uh, this is kind of built in here. You can see that that component is a little bit uh, a little bit more realistic on the right there. But uh, that's kind of all you get here. Now, the reason I'm not moving anything is because as soon as I move it, it goes and redraws it. And that's, that's basically why I say like it's a static kind of image. The OpenGL is actually able to render quite fast. You can actually see its render time down here in the lower left corner. So I usually keep it on OpenGL just because I want to do that. Same thing here. If you, have, if you want options, you could turn off like the shadows and the floors and stuff like that. Uh, but since I'm not using uh, ray tracing that often, it's not that big a deal. Uh, let's go to the colors, though. This is something that I do use a bit more often. If I want to get a, a more realistic view of like the solder mask, say I want to turn it to a green. This is probably more likely of what I would... Well, that's a pretty ugly green there. Um, <laughs> but this is more likely to what I would actually send out. So uh, let's see, a darker green maybe. How about that one? I don't know if that's any better. That's a little bit better. It's kind of like Kermit Green right now. Um, so uh, that, that's a little bit closer to kind of what I expect. And I think the defaults are actually in green. You can change out other stuff as well. Grids, axes, stuff like that. We can say, oh, reset to default. There we go. So this is the actual default here. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of it. I mean, basically, we get all the rotation buttons here. You see we have more stuff, more navigation stuff here. But in general, you know, what I do is I normally have, uh, you know, especially if I'm moving stuff around, I'll move stuff, and it will re-render it, actually. So it's kind of hard to see if I'm moving it here. Let's see if I can do this side by side. It sometimes doesn't like doing side by side. But if I do move, say I move a, uh, a silk screen, you will see it actually does move it. It's, you know, it's a little bit of work, and it does, uh, you know, it can bog down, especially if you have a really, really, um, a really advanced board or really, you know, a lot of components on it. So I, I don't always leave it open, but as I'm doing those final adjustments of, of silk screen and, and other text I might add or logos I add on a board, I think it's really valuable for that kind of thing. So this was just a small look at the 3D viewer of KiCad 5.0. I think a lot of this stuff has changed, especially that uh, export and import stuff. I think that has gotten a lot better. We actually will go over the import a little bit more because you know if you need to pull in a 3D model from another source, we should go over that kind of thing. If you have any other questions, you go over to the KiCad forum. That's forum.kiCad.info. Or you can go and ask over on the Contextual Electronics forums if you have a general electronics question. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.